Networks are a lot like hospitals or airports. They are constantly under construction. There's constant change occurring. Generally, these changes happen in very large phases. You're replacing a large number of switches. You're adding a central core router to your environment. There's usually big changes that all happen at the same time. Whenever you're looking at your network, it's hard to know exactly how it's laid out. A lot of the network itself is behind the wall or under the floor. You can't actually see where the cables are going. You know that they connect to a switch on one end and they connect to a workstation on the other, but you aren't exactly sure how those might be connected to each other in other parts of the organization. One of the things that's important then is that you document everything. You have a way to know that all of the wires from this wiring closet are distributed out to all of the devices on this particular part of the building. Those particular pieces of documentation seem like simple things or pieces that you might gloss over when you're installing this for the first time, but it's going to help you a lot six months down the line, a year down the line, when you walk up to this room and you're wondering, where do all these wires go? Now you've got some documentation you can fall back on. If you're the new hire, this could be a really good opportunity to understand exactly how the network is laid out. You might want to volunteer to create a map of the network. Documentation is something we never seem to have enough of. So you may volunteer to go to a floor to look at the devices that are in the core of your network and start tracing the wire and understanding where does that router connect to? Oh, it connects to these switches. How are these switches configured? They have these particular VLANs associated with them. Where do those VLANs go? What do servers and what devices are connected to that VLAN? This can really help you later on as you get more responsibility and need to make some network changes. You'll then know exactly where these devices are connected. Documenting your network is a little bit different than opening up a spreadsheet or opening up a word processing document and typing things into that. Generally, these are graphical maps, a lot like the one that's displayed here. You have icons that are associated and represent switches and routers, and you connect them together with other lines. There are other icons for firewalls. This can be a pretty complex view of what's going on. So usually, we have specialized software that allows us to do this. On the Windows side, there is commercial software from Microsoft called Visio. On the Mac OS X side, you might use OmniGraffle. There's even free and available online capabilities from things like Gliffy.com that allows you to create online maps. That's where this map came from. Once you have the map in place, now you can start troubleshooting. You can use this for future planning. You can put it up on the wall and determine how you might want to upgrade certain parts of the network. Seeing something in a visual form is very often much better and easier than seeing things in something that might be written in a text-based form. There are a lot of different ways to map out the network. A very common way is to physically map out what devices you have and physically draw the wire that is connecting those devices together. This physical map is going to give you a perspective of exactly the way the network is linked together. You know what device is connected to what device is connected to what device. Sometimes you can even make them much more visual. You can build the rack and show physically all of the devices that you have in the rack that you have in your data center, all the way down to the very specific model of device that you could see plugged into the rack and where it might be located. That way you can give this documentation to somebody else. They can go right to the rack, and they can compare your picture to what they are seeing. They'll know immediately, yes, this is exactly the rack, because I can see all of the devices in here match what's on your documentation. It's nice seeing the physical connectivity that you have, but these days we have virtual servers. We have VLANs running across our networks. There is a logical network design that's sometimes difficult to overlay on top of a physical network design. Sometimes you'll have two separate pictures of your network, one that is the physical design and the other that is the logical design of your network. The logical design obviously goes into how devices are configured to communicate with each other. And you can see things like a high level view across a WAN, for instance. Here's a lot of different devices and how they're connected in. This isn't showing every router and every firewall. It's simply giving you a high level view. So you can see how all of these different locations are connecting back to the main home branch. You can also use this for planning or collaboration when you're trying to add other sites into the mix or you're trying to understand how you could get better performance to a site. You can pull up your logical view and see what path your data takes from your location to another. 
by mapping out your network and getting an understanding of how this network is designed, it's going to help you troubleshoot and understand how to plan for the future.